Chapter 957 Ultimate Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pa D cast where we talk about One Piece. I'm the best guy ever and this is Give and Take. Hey. Great to have you. <laughs> well, how's it hanging? Uh, you know how it is. You read a One Piece chapter and it turns out that it's in middle school or something and you're like, what, a, what happened? Before we get to the chapter, there's a little uh, uh, chapter 596.99, One Piece Academy business trip edition on your local Jiminy's box and or manga stream, whatever. What'd you think there, Gib? Um, I thought it was pretty funny. I didn't realize it wasn't drawn by Oda at first, but you can mm-hmm. you can tell. Mostly because yeah, some, some of the lines are too clean and, and Oda's like wobbly at the, at the, at the moment. <laughs> He's that all like sketch, sketchy, wobbly, sort of like, hey, yeah, just sort of like busting out a great character design, like, like really quick. <laughs> I like seeing some of the some of the like unknown characters, like I don't know, like page two or whatever. You see the guy, the sword shop from Rogue Town, who sold Zoro his swords. Uh, yes. Of course, Kobe's there. Hey, Don Krieg is featured, and you kind of feel like Oda doesn't really care or remember much about Don Krieg these days. I mean, that's fine. He was small potatoes anyway, but. Geen Bros. Geen Bros. Our boy's coming back one day. It's confirmed. I mean, he is here, sort of, Geen. Is Geen in this? Yeah, he's, he's like, right behind uh, Don Krieg in, like, oh one my. panel. <laughs> Holy shit, let me, let me look. Oh my god, it's fucking Geen! Geen Bros! Any day now, <laughs> he's coming back. <laughs> this oh, is... he's in two panels! A full two panels! Damn. Incredible. Well, uh, that confirms it for me. Yes, uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. It's worth reading. I mean, it's amusing, One Piece characters. It's kind of like the, the things Oda did of the, like... I mean, this isn't drawn by Oda, so I really am not that interested, but it was amusing. You got Pell, you got Chapa, whatever his fucking name is. You got Uruj, you, you, you Aokiji. Got Tiny Robin. I laughed. I did like Tiny Robin, and I liked Frankie. Uh, what what has three, four legs in the morning, uh, two legs during midday, and three legs at night? The answer is me, Frankie. <laughs> but that's... That's not accurate, Frankie. Robin gets it right. Oh, she's cute. Oh, she's a good girl. Yeah. I like it. It's enjoyable. Read I, it, everybody. Read yeah. it. Uh, all right. Chapter? What is it called? Nine, Nine five, fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Ultimate. Ultimate! Ichiban chapter des. Uh, let's get into it. The cover page, who cares? It's Luffy. Whatever. Doing a quiz show. Robin looks very sexual. Excellent job. Uh, okay. Actual events. Oh, and co- cover spread. Looking good. Uh, Frankie holding Robin. Looking sexy again. Brooke showing off the midriff. Excellent. Colors. Pick up your speed. Man, he's There's really a duck showing race. that off. He's like, he really is. That's a, a, pel- that's a, that's a pelvic thrust. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Mick one. Jagger of the One Piece world. Um, and uh, I, I imagine this is in honor of Duck Game. Untitled Duck Game. Oda, big It's fan. Untitled Goose Game, isn't it? Ah, shit, you're right. Okay, maybe he's a goose. Whatever. Um, one thing I Same noticed guy. that was a bit strange about this, because mm-hmm. I cause I love these things. I always love how it, it's both, like, really well put together and mm. a really creative idea and great colors. And it's like, how, yeah. how do you do that, like, every so often? How do you do that I love that how ever? happy Zoro looks. He looks so yeah, smug. He's and got a happy. he's got a real Neko uh, face on. Like, happy, happy <laughs> That's cat. true. But Ooh. I noticed, uh, like thinking of like, ah, what a cool design. I wonder how he comes up with this. But I was looking mm. at the design. The windshield is behind Zoro and Chopper. Uh, yeah, Frankie is, or uh, uh, Sanji is piloting from behind that windshield. Yeah. Well, there are seats in front yeah, of why the would you, windshield. Why would you put seats in front of um, the windshield? Okay, uh, okay. With boats, with boats in general, they usually put the steering wheel at like the back or like the middle of the boat. Not like a car where it's in the front. Now, the fact that his seat is low and other people are directly in front in the way, plus Luffy and the duck at the front, it's like, does not make a lot of sense. Um, it's just, just a know. funny little strange thing, I notice. Like, why would you <laughs> have uh, a Sanji's... windshield if, if there are seats in front at all? You, you, you you're know, supposed to, to uh, not get the wind. That's, that's true, and I don't have an answer for that. Um, good luck, Sanji. Godspeed. <laughs> All right. right, let's get to it. Chapter time. 
ultimate. What so, could it mean? Still in out. the uh, intermission between mm-hmm. one acts, mm-hmm. so stuff's going on around the world. We're in New Marine headquarters. Mm-hmm. New Marine Ford. And uh, yeah, they're talking about how the Shibukai have been disbanded, uh, mm-hmm. forcibly by the, the decree of the king. Yep. And uh, you know things might change for the works uh, for the worse because they're talking about the rocks pirates potentially coming back. And uh, today, today, children, we will learn all about the rocks pirates. It's indeed, a big old history. Indeed, lesson. we will. Uh, you know, so it's Aokiji talking to, to Fujitora Isho. They mentioned this SSG. So previously, it was said a while back that, like, um, you know, everyone in Fujitora was talking about wanting to abolish the Shichibukai. Mission accomplished. Congrats. Ao- uh, uh, Akainu was not on the same page. He thought they were a useful bunch, even though he's very anti pirate. So that's kind of surprising. He probably thought it was, like, necessary or something. I, I don't know. You'd think he'd be a little more, hell yes, fuck the pirates. I- I think maybe it's mm-hmm. it could be like um, k- like Kuma was one of the mm-hmm. Shichibukai that they turned into a robot, and he's like, you know, True. I want this power to like steal pirates and like use them as weapons. Yeah, I, I assume it's just the pragma because I mean Fujitora is doing it for like the morality of like employing pirates who he knows are bad bad boys, whereas Aokiji's, I mean, he fucking hates pirates. We all know this. But I, I assume he just thinks it does more harm, more, more good than harm to have them. Maybe true. I, I don't know. Um, but, but as a replacement, they're talking about this SSG being like the replacement power balance, which we don't know too much about. But I believe it was mentioned previously that it's like a Vegapunk initiative of some kind. It's, so, the, it's eh. the Super Secret Goon Squad. Hmm. <laughs> I think it's called the Super... No, I can't be right. I want to say Super Science... Gang, I, I think it's mentioned later, so we'll, we'll we'll get to that. All right, let's let's keep going here. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether SSG was something that has been mentioned previously or whether this is a new thing. I believe this is the first time it's been mentioned this chapter, um, but I, I don't know. Whatever, man. Who who fucking cares? Um, the times when things are mentioned aren't that important. But we see Fujitora is seems to be in the middle of a battle right here against, at the very least, some sea kings. As they're as they're sailing out somewhere, presumably on his way back to uh, to New Marine Ford or whatever. So that's that's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm trying or to think where he would I, I be know. going. Like, he's probably just got duties. The Is thing he that's still an admiral with them or... right now. No, he, yeah, he's definitely still an admiral. Yeah. Um, uh, like presumably he'd probably be out on missions to capture the Shichibukai. That seems like the appropriate yeah. mission now that this is the big change. But he, he, I think he just happens to be fighting some Sea Kings right now. And we can see he's bandaged, which is almost undoubtedly from the fight. We know him and, uh, what is it, R- R- Roku, Gr- Green Bull guy, had against uh, Sabo and the revolutionaries in, um, you know, after or during uh, Reverie. So, yeah. man, that's cool. That's cool. But yeah, there, there's a there's a hint dropped. Um, still, we don't know exactly what happened at Reverie. Uh, I, I, I um, mm-hmm. had some uh, thoughts that maybe there could be something that the Marines are looking for, an item that Blackbeard is trying to beat the Marines to the punch, and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. potentially in Alabaster. And uh, I, uh, Akainu says here yeah, that yeah. For, for all this to happen when we're already so busy, what a disaster. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if they're already very busy, what are they doing? Hmm? What are they searching? Well, he, he, he says that directly in response to, like, apparently a Big Mom and Kaido have formed an alliance, and they're like, and he, like, he's just learning this and says, what? Does this mean the rocks have returned? Um, so that sounds like this is, or, I, you know, I think this is actually big news for Fuji Tora is Fuji- just being told this. Yeah. Akainu already knew. Yeah, okay. So stop talking like there's some kind of legend. This is reality we're facing. And he's just like, now, for, for that to happen, those two to form an alliance while we're busy. Yeah. That's the disaster he's directing. I, I guess, the, I guess I it could also be that. They're trying to get I think you're right, though. And, uh... you know, I, I think people were saying in the comments last time or whatever that, like, it's definitely 100% true. Something else happened. Like, there was an assassin. People were saying that what they think might have happened is just, for example... Because uh, it was said that it involved Alabasta. Maybe someone assassinated Cobra. Uh, you know, maybe it was, like, f- pinned on Sabo or something. I mean, who knows? It could be anything. 
So we'll uh, we'll find out hopefully. Oh, soon. That, that's an interesting take. I could... Yeah, right. I, I no reason to believe that necessarily, but we know it involves Alabasta. Cobra has been sick for a while, which is kind of weird. Like, what are they getting at with him being sick all of a sudden? And um, and they a death was supposedly involved with it. So it would make sense if I don't know something happened with that. But who knows? No, no reason to believe it necessarily. We will find out as uh, as time goes along. So here yeah. we go back to. Uh, Commodore brand new at leading the meeting at New Marine Ford, lecturing everybody about cool things that are happening. Yeah, so apparently uh, the Rooks Pirates, nobody really knows about them, even among the Marines, so they're getting, giving everyone like a history lesson. They've been intentionally suppressed by the, uh, by the Marines because they were such big, scary boys who did lots of mysterious things. Yes. So that's so why, yeah, yeah. First big bombshell is that mm -hmm. uh, Whitebeard... Big Mom and Kaido, in their youth, were led mm -hmm. by the Captain Rocks. So uh, that's three out of the initial four Yonko were under, in one crew, uh, which is pretty pretty epic, pretty big. That is pretty fucking epic. And uh, the, like uh, upon learning this, there's a couple other things we know. We know that um, what's her face? Uh, shit, what's her name? Like, uh, Weebles, Weebles mom, who said she had a relationship with Whitebeard. I think it's basically confirmed she was also on this crew with these folks. Um, that doesn't really tell us much, but, like, you know, interesting to note. And then also, uh, Shaki, uh, Rayleigh's GF or whatever. Um, th there are hints about, like, the rocks being discussed and, like, the timeline matched up. And Oda, Oda commented on this specifically in an SBS like someone asked about was this was she on the rocks because this is like weirdly matched up and Oda was like uh I, I I can't comment on that and he chose to include that in an hmm. SBS so it almost a hundred percent confirms that Shaki was also in the uh, in the rocks pirates so it so, feels like interesting the like mm -hmm. pirate king Goldie Roger was like mm -hmm. he was not the obviously the biggest pirate at the time because he like. This if was it, before he became Pirate King, which was like 25 years ago. So yeah, that's like it's 15 like these years guys getting that. getting yeah. beat was the thing I think that allowed him to become Pirate King. It seems like a lot of the crew, the mm -hmm. from notable mm -hmm. people that have like survived, maybe even Rayleigh. I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe. Probably not Rayleigh though. He probably had like a first mate the whole time, like a oh, best well, friend. Oh well, we 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 saw the flashback when uh, Roger met. Uh, Silver's Rayleigh, when, like, I think that was still in Goa Kingdom, when he was just, like, a little nobody. Yeah. So, uh, presumably, they've been together the whole time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, the idea of Shaki and, and, and other people mm -hmm. potentially being from the Rocks Pirates instead of always on the Pirate King's crew is interesting. Indeed. Indeed. And it, it's mentioned right here. Um, they say that other people used to be on this crew as well. Uh, the Golden Lion, that's uh, Keen Shiki, Shiki yep. uh, from the movie. Cool that he's mentioned. Pretty Pretty dope. Um, we've got uh, the Silver Axe. We don't know who that is. That's totally unconfirmed yet. Captain uh, John. Axe, uh, that's Axe Hand Morgan. Oh, I everyone's think. saying it's fucking Axe Hand Morgan. <laughs> Based Axe Hand Morgan. My God, powerful. And like he would have been literally like three at the time, and still like <laughs> what a what a badass. Um, <laughs> Captain John. He, he had, so a, quick he had history. a tiny little. He t had a tiny little uh, hatchet instead of a big axe. <laughs> he, he, oh, he, what a cutie! He, uh, upgraded as he went. Um, there's, uh, so they say Captain John, a, a history lesson, if you forget who Captain John is, Captain John was first introduced on Thriller Bark as one of the zombies that Gekko Moria, as like one of their special zombies or whatever, um, there was, or like the executive zombies or something, uh, he's also, at the end of Thriller Bark, uh, Luffy got that armband that Buggy later wanted to take, because that armband somehow was like the map to Captain John's treasure, which is this Captain John, that Buggy was, like, pursuing his his little, like, side arc that he didn't finish, but uh, maybe he'll go back to at some point, or, I don't know, something will happen with that. And that's that's what we know about Captain John. And then there's this Oh Choku, who's a real-life... Uh, she's that badass, like, female Chinese pirate who, yeah. like, was a prostitute and then became, like, a fucking... I mean, she's one of the coolest pirates of all time in real life. Fucking yes. led, like, a, a... She was, like, an admiral of a fucking fleet... So cool. She, so fucking she's cool. She's like a like a, a watery Genghis Khan. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh my god, like just, I'm sorry, I just, I, I've looked her up before and it's so fucking sick to geek out. She was like literally like a concubine, a straight up prostitute who just like killed the cap, the pirate captain that like was her like owner or whatever. She like then took over the fucking crew and became one of the biggest fleet admiral captains of a pirate fleet in history. Like despite being a woman who like would have had all the odds against her because she was just that fucking sick. Oh my god, so cool. So fucking cool. So uh, I hope we learn about her, because she sounds real, real dope. Although, honestly, no matter what Oda does, I'm not sure he'll be able to beat the real dope legend of, of her uh, in real life, because it's already, like, Blackbeard-level shit. Uh, mm. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all these people Moving sailed on. under the Rocks Pirates. Mm -hmm, and when mm -hmm. the Rocks Pirates disbanded, or were defeated, they all left and presumably made their own things. I feel like um, mm -hmm. if uh, Ochoku, like a Chinese real life pirate, perhaps yeah. in some way is connected, maybe not like blood relative way, but like to the mm -hmm. Hapo Navy with all those Chinese looking ships. Yeah, that's not crazy to think about. Probably some or very strongly might be a connection there. They're like the China of the world. So, although also the long arm guys are very Chinese themed. I mean, oh, I, I don't know true. if that's well. Is, is, is it's it, just two peoples. I, I don't know. They could just be from the same sort of area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. I, I, maybe they're from the same island, and that's just like where the long arms are from. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Oda could do all kinds of crazy stuff with that. Um, but then it, it's interesting to note that. Uh, so, so this was. I, I looked into this a little bit. As opposed to, like, Luffy's dream, Gold Roger's thing of being king of the pirates, which is basically a thing that was made up, like, by Roger, like, to define Roger later. Yeah. Rox had a higher goal to be king of the world. So that's that's actually above pirate cap or, uh, you know, pirate king or whatever. So that's that's interesting. That, that, that was, like, mistranslated in, I think, manga stream. But uh, it was, in fact, king of the world as opposed to king of the pirates. So, so that's cool. Which is basically what Eam seems to be, maybe. So... I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it makes you wonder it, uh, whether, like, mm -hmm. Roger also mm -hmm. wanted to be the king of the world or, like, whether he had a goal beyond being the king of the pirates. Because it feels like mm, the king of the yeah. pirates, if, mm -hmm. if, if if we're, like, thinking logically, mm -hmm. and the, the, the way that he, like, ushered in a new pirate age is that he's, mm -hmm. like, the shepherd of the pirates. Like, he wants the future pirates yeah. to, to finish what he started because he died of an illness or, or whatever it is. Um, That's possible, and he knew the secret so, like, history of the world. It, it so. could be like the the mm -hmm. king of the pirates is not really a thing that needs to exist after, uh, you know, Eam gets knocked down a peg. Yeah, P push it, push him over. Uh, like have somebody kneel behind next, uh, un b b behind him, and then you push him over, and he falls down, <laughs> and then his crown you know, falls I off. <laughs> that, that, that's a fair point. Cause I had a long discussion yesterday with uh, many of the people in the Pod D Discord, which you should join uh, in the link below, people, so we can talk about One Piece on the reg. It's a vibrant, active community. Um, but uh, it, it, they were. I was talking with someone. I forget exactly who it was, but they were saying that like the the role of the Pirate King exists. Really, it, it doesn't need to exist. But, like, Luffy being as someone who, like, embodies freedom. Roger as, like, he was the initial one. Luffy's, like, inheriting that will. He's, like, the new guy who's all about freedom above all. Not necessarily good or evil, just freedom. And then there's Eam and, like, the world government that represents, like, control, power, you know, regimented societies and all that stuff. It's like those two forces oppose each other. And it seems like the world of One Piece, like, is mostly overly controlled by the world governments and, like, the Marines and stuff. So they can do all kinds of crazy shit. Like, they did do Ohara. Like, burning it to the ground just because they were trying to research bad shit the government had done in the past. So, like, yeah. Like, the Pirate King and Roger, it seems like they exist. Like, like why did Roger do the whole King of the Pirates thing? My fortune is yours for the taking, but you'll have to find it first. My, my guess is that, like, he wanted people to continue seeking out, like, the secret history of the world, and this was his way to, like, kind of get them to do so, to... Yeah. Uh, yeah, just, like, keep keep doing the stuff. Like, like, when Silver's Rayleigh... Yeah, and, when, like, when Silver's Rayleigh met with Robin, instead of Ro uh, him, like, Robin said, like, hey, I, again, I did research on this, too. He was like, uh, uh, or she asked, hey, what's the Will of D? Like, what's the Void history? Do you know what it is? Tell me, Rayleigh. Rayleigh's like, yeah, I know what it is. 
We did our research, but like I want you guys to go do your own research well, so that you he, can have your own interpretation. It's yeah. it's. I mean, I don't think he was going to tell them. He may have. He may have been. About he, he said to, tell to Robin. Them. I I looked into this. He said to Robin, "I will tell you, but what I recommend is that you look for yourself and you get your own answers because you'll probably get okay. like a different perspective or picture." I, than, I remember. And Robin the, said, "No, thank you." I, I remember that, that, like, Luffy interrupted and said no, but I guess... No, no, no. He interrupted when Usopp asked about One Piece, which is a second question. Uh, the Void history, he was perfectly willing to let him tell Robin about. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shows, shows Luffy's priorities. He just cares about the adventure. He doesn't care about the history or any yeah, of that Yeah, no shit. spoilers. <laughs> but only on the stuff he actually cares about. Um... Yeah, okay, uh, well, we, we can talk more about that, but so so the Rocks existed, he wants to be king of the world, so they actually were like a terrorist group, specifically focusing on like overthrowing the world government to become king of the yes. world, which is not necessarily what the Pirate King does, so and, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so because of that, that's the reason the government has been like mm -hmm. uh, hiding all of the, you know, the mm -hmm. exploits and nobody knows about them anymore nowadays, except Indeed. the people who were there Indeed. at the time. Um but yes, thirty-eight years ago, a fateful incident occurred at a place known as God's Valley or God Valley, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is a pretty cool name. Sure um, is. On that fateful day, the rocks, the strongest pirate crew in the world, perished on that island, and this is this is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. So, Garp, Vice Admiral Garp, uh, in his prime, mm -hmm. uh, was the guy uh, along with Roger that helped defeat this overwhelmingly super powerful uh world uh like trying to take over terrorist group uh he he, d he did it he stopped it and then he became known as the hero of the marines yep. this is really big he got his title i mean this is huge first of all jesus christ could we suck garp's dick any harder like god damn this guy single i mean okay i was gonna say single-handedly like, Garp is basically confirmed to be, like, Roger level, more or less. And these two guys, they beat Big Mom. They beat Kaido. They beat Whitebeard. They beat the Rocks guy. Presumably a strong guy, too. Now, uh, it is said that, like, they were weaker than they are now. So they weren't yeah. as powerful as they've become. But still. But still. I mean, yeah, that would... It, God it's, damn. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, they were weaker. But also, Garp would have been weaker as well. Probably. Uh, well, I mean, he if might have been the same time at this point. If it's the he's same time now. period. Um, yeah, I mean, he's Silver, older than them, I think. Yeah, but Rayleigh's like, a, looks about the same age. Unless he's like 80. Yeah. And, and everyone yeah. else is like 60 or something. I mean, I would, I would bet that Rayleigh's lost some power too. He is an old man now. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think like Big Mom and Kaido are a bit younger than like these other guys like Sengoku and um, uh, Garp and, and even Roger. I mean, Roger's dead, so, but, but you know. Uh, by the way, note on this. Okay, this chapter has absolutely set the world on fire about, like, theory crafting and, like, the speculation people. Uh. So there's, I mean, I, yeah, I was, yesterday we were digging into it. So there's a couple things. First of all, let me just say, actually, you know, we'll, we'll get to it later. But, but on this subject, some people were saying that the God Valley Island looks just like the island where I think uh, Shanks and Mihawk met a while back. Okay, like I'm not gonna bother. I don't even remember who said it, but someone said it looks just like it. It's some of these like theory crafter people. It's definitely not true, and this is obvious if you use your fucking eyes and you look at it and you compare the two images. Okay, it's called God Valley, right? We can see that that island has a big fucking valley in the middle of the two peaks. I mean, this is its primary feature. The island that Shanks and Mihawk met on does bear some some resemblance. It's true. But it does not have a big fucking valley between the central, like, like, peninsula, or not peninsula, plateau, like, in the middle. It just doesn't have that. And there's also many other, it, like, it also just generally doesn't look the same. And the island may or may not exist. The point is, it's definitely not that fucking place. So don't let them trick you. Don't let them fool you. Anyone you, people have such incentives to like overhype things or to theory craft about things that obviously are not in fact true. I'm not even speculating. We, we can just see that it's not the same place and we know it doesn't look the same. Um, so don't get, don't get fooled by uh, people saying this shit. I suppose, I mean, I don't really see why it would be interesting that it's the same island that they were just at. 
Well, like, as they go on, as they go on, they talk about how this island, this was such a big event, it was wiped from the map. And like, oh my god, if Shanks and Mihawk met on this secret island that was wiped from the map, and it's called Godvale, that clearly has a, a connection to the, the, the Gorosei and the Tenryubito. What does that imply about Shanks' relationships with them? Nothing. Because it's not the same place. Uh, yeah, so I mean, just don't... It, People get all wound up about this stuff, and it, uh, it's not helpful. It's not helpful. I mean, I was looking into this yesterday. There was there was quite a few people. I mean, this one person said like it's like ninety five percent the same looking or something, but it just doesn't. It doesn't have the fucking valley. It looks different. I haven't seen okay, this then, image, but uh, yeah, sounds. Oh, I can find it for you later. But it's trust yeah. me, it's not the same place. Okay, but regardless, back to the point. Big news: Garp beat these boys. He destroyed yes. the rock. We know, we know nothing Incredible. about. We know nothing about like the setup for this. What is at God's Valley? Why they were right. able to? Maybe they got like ambushed or it was a traitor or something. Like all this mm -hmm. potential mm -hmm. stuff. The only thing we know is that Garp beat them, and they Indeed. at that point disbanded. I, I presume because mm -hmm. the rocks captain was defeated, pr imprisoned, and or killed. Pr presumably something along those lines. Yeah. But, I mean, we know that many of them survived and went on to become Yonko and other big yeah, boys. Yeah, that's the, that's the one they interesting were... thing. is like, if so many of them s survived, was it because mm -hmm. Rox sacrificed himself to let them survive? But um... That's the most likely thing, that something happened to Rox, so they lost their, like, unifying agent. Because they're talked about as being, like, a crew that's very chaotic and yeah. only well, slapdash put together. Yeah. yeah, but that's the thing as well. Like, if it's a chaotic mm -hmm. crew, why would he go to such lengths to make sure his crew can get us get away like, I feel like if he's, like, a crazy man, then know. his, you know, with all these crazy people that don't really get mm -hmm. along perfectly, because, you know, Kaido, Big mm -hmm. Mom, and Whitebeard fought right after this forever. Um, Indeed they did. So, like, it's probably not that he has, like, a strong bond with them and wanted to sacrifice himself. It could be that they ran away uh, and he got captured, or, or maybe he's still there and he's still alive. So many well, things. there's some fascinating theories about this. I want—I I don't know if I already met it. Um, oh, okay. We actually did already cover this. I did want to go back to it and say. So it was the, the formation of the Rocks Pirates was said. Um, uh, on here it said, many years ago on the Pirates Island Beehive, many significant individuals came together to seek a quick path to fame and fortune. That meeting led to the formation of the Rocks Pirates. Now, let's just pause on that for a second. So this is when Brand New was giving his lecture early on, or Sengoku or someone. So the Pirates Island Beehive. Um, we know it's also called the Pirate's Paradise. It's also where Blackbeard is right now. Um, it's, it, that is the island where Blackbeard was, uh, the pirate beehive or whatever. And he had, he just set out like last chapter to go do stuff. I think recruit Chichibukai. We don't know for sure. Could have been something else. But so he just left to go do things there. So, okay, that's interesting. That's a clear connection to Blackbeard. Uh, he's like in charge of that island right now. Um... It's also interesting to note that uh, it's, I believe it's said later on or something. Oh, okay. No, no. Uh, like, some meeting happened on this island that led to the formation of the Rocks Pirates. What else do we know about this pirate, uh, the, the, the pirate paradise island beehive? Well, one thing that's interesting to note is that long, long time ago, um, a, a, a guy named Foxy the Silver Fox... Um, from the, the Long Ring Long Land Island arc or whatever, did a little thing with the Straw Hat Boys called the Davy Backfight. And one of the features of the Davy Backfight is that it's used to poach crewmen and to acquire crewmen for your own squad. And it is said that where does the Davy Backfight come from? He literally says, the pirate, the island of the Pirate's Paradise. That is exactly the nickname given to the Beehive Island that Blackbeard is on. Is it possible that the Davy backfight itself is the method through which the Rocks Pirates were assembled? I don't know. That's it's just that interesting would be to think cool. about. I definitely think, wouldn't it? Yeah, Davy backfights. I think like for for the casual One Piece reader, the person who doesn't mm -hmm. think about things every week, like in, yeah. in extreme depth. They probably have forgotten completely about the Davy back fight because of the. It's been such a long time since it's even mm -hmm. been mentioned ever. Yeah, um, I don't blame him. Which is why, knowing Oda, it would be so like he would love to bring it back and have it be an incredibly serious thing, from mm -hmm. the past mm -hmm. or like the future. Uh, I still, I still definitely want Luffy and Shanks to have a Davy back fight for One Piece, 
Me and, too. Me too. You know that all that all that cool shit. So yeah, that. You know what if Foxy is like the coolest guy of all time? What if Sil- he... Silver Axe, you say? Silver S- Fox? Uh, same word, basically. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's got an, e- it's that got out an there. X. Uh, That's so- all I need, baby. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> oh, by the way, here's another excellent piece of supporting evidence for this. Okay, look at the at the shot of the Rocks Pirates. You got Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, Kinshiki in the background, so we're a golden lion or whatever. And then you got Rocks. Literal manlet. Literal manlet compared to them. What are the odds a manlet such as him would be able to inspire, like, a loyalty or get this crew together unless it was through some form of trickery like the Davy back fight? It's the only logical sense that you could get these lanklets, these tall boys, to work under a pathetic manlet such as him. Uh, I'm just saying. This is su- supporting evidence. It's the only you know, way it makes yeah, any maybe. sense. <laughs> I mean, it's not like small characters. I mean, characters. Luffy's a manlet himself. Yeah, uh, and he got Brooke on the team, so. <laughs> it's 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 not like small characters are inherently less strong than big characters. No, not at all. Is not at all. in One Piece. But, um, yeah, I, I just assumed, like, the Marines were reacting like, oh, if he had all those people in his crew, he must be super mm-hmm. strong. It would be funny if he's not actually super strong. Look at Buggy. Maybe he's a primordial Buggy back in the day. It, I, I don't Buggy's know. He's Buggy's dad. This is kind <laughs> Ooh, what if yeah, what if in, Buggy, in, as an in, act in, of teenage rebellion, joined the Roger Pirates? Because fuck you, Dad. I'm gonna join the opposite guys. I yeah. hate you. Yeah, and, and hell yeah. yeah. Inside uh, his red nose <laughs> hides There's like a... the secret to One Piece. <laughs> he just has to sneeze really loud. Lol. And then the it's door. It's just an allergic reaction. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get back to it. So we we covered the events. Garp. This is one of his many acts of heroism. This is like the first big one. Um, yeah. This is why he's called the Hero of the Marines. And But if you ask Garp about it, he'll give you the facts that he beat them up. Um, but the biggest reason why he doesn't want to talk about it is because he had to ally with a pirate. Here's where he's saying he had to ally with fucking Roger yeah. to fight against the, the, the Rocks pirates. And the other reason was he had to pro- he was protecting the celestial dragons specifically on that mission in God Valley and he was protecting the celestial dragons and their slaves and Garp is no fan of them but like we- so this is this is a very mysterious thing i don't know exactly why like uh, so so Roger and Garp teamed up to def- uh, seemingly defend the Ten Ryubito and their slave almost like they're protecting the status quo currently against being overthrown by the rocks, which like doesn't doesn't really stack up. So I, there's got to be more going on here than there's uh, definitely got to be more think. going on. I'm I'm I mm-hmm. am curious about this because like for one, mm-hmm. if Garp uh, ha- like he was a marine, so he's like mm-hmm. on a bound to do this stuff, even if he doesn't like it, right. I can see him doing that. Mm-hmm. Roger teaming mm-hmm. up, but Roger, yeah, yeah. like is curious. I think it's maybe that like he. He did, he had a fundamental disagreement with the way the Rocks mm-hmm. Pirates, uh, or like Mr. Rocks or whatever his name is, was going yeah. about <laughs> taking over the world. And he's like, this isn't going to work this way. You know, you're yeah. just going to make things worse. You need to inspire pirates uh, by doing something else. Like, he has a different plan for how to destroy the king. Maybe he doesn't have mm-hmm. a plan, but I, I'm sure he's all about freedom. So, like, the the idea mm-hmm. of the, the world government and the Tin Rubito is like... He wants them gone, but like in this one instance, it's better to defend them. I don't know uh, yeah, how, I don't yeah. know why. It would be really cool to know. I can't wait for this flashback. Some people have said that like maybe they were defending the slaves who were in danger. I mean, look, pe- people, there's no reason to overthink this. It's perfectly legit. Like, I-, I honestly think this is like a misdirect that Oda's putting in to make us be like, ooh, what? Was Roger defending the status quo? Is he actually pro slavery? It, it's just far more, it, it's presented in this very chapter that Roger and Rox were rivals. They were opposed to each other, and he may have been Roger's number one most powerful adversary ever. Um, he certainly framed that way as the captain of all these you know, future Yonko guys. It's perfectly reasonable to think that there just was an incident where, like, this is where things came to a head between these two forces. The Rogers and Garp, they happened to be both opposed to to you know rocks and his boys who were just trying to do some evil plan you know make or just were in their way and they this was the place where they fought and had their mm-hmm. final battle so i mean like, i feel like it's yeah, yeah. I, I doubt anything that happened mm-hmm. on, on god valley was like 
just a coincidence, like, oh, they just happened to also be Tenry Bito there to defend. Um, um I mean, I, sure, I sure. Would, I would say that, like, the most likely thing is that Roger defended the Tenry Bito uh, to defeat the, uh, defeat the Rox Pirates, because in this time, it was, like, the lesser of two evils. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, mm. it's still very I mean, curious. I, I like, I, I, I have agree. no, I have no, like, probable, like, like, anything's possible. It, Any, it anything, anything anybody says about this is like, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess so. But that's what I, I think. This is a, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I obviously, I obviously don't think it's a, it's an incident. I mean, may, maybe, th- this is the kind of thing that's almost like One Piece movie-esque. Like, we're, we're finally at the true endgame, like, the most powerful people ever here. Like, this could be a thing where, like, maybe Rox had a plan to, like, literally blow up the whole fucking world. I mean, just as a crazy example or something. And Roger's like, okay, I better, like, do something about this. Like, if, he, if this guy's, like, so anti-establishment, he's willing to, like, kill everyone or, like, blow up, like, I don't know, 50% of the fucking Earth's population. I mean, that's a position where you'd be like, okay... I don't agree with the establishment, but also this is probably going too far. Let's stop this guy and maybe find a middle ground, you know, something along those lines. That seems, you know, like not outside the realm of possibility as well. So, yeah, we will learn more. There's tons more. People are speculating. I get it. We'll see what happens. Um, And so, of course, we've got Sengoku here clarifying that, like, yeah, the Celestial Dragons were there. Roger, the Rocks were all there. Garp was there. Big fight. And then after this battle, uh, whatever happened here, not only... It, so, this this is where things are a little bit questionable. I'd like to check the original Japanese. Uh, Sengoku says, The island of God Valley is no longer drawn on the maps of the world. And the truth is, after the incident, the whole valley disappeared without a trace. That That appears to imply it really is physically gone. That seems to be implied I, by that. I we don't would, know for sure. Hmm. I mean, the island of God Valley mm-hmm. no longer drawn on maps... Whether that's a I'm result of like, uh, whether that's like a result of like the world government covering up the incident so much that there's like no maps can have this, or yeah, it could mean that, or because there's possibility that somebody would sail into this direction, maybe mm-hmm. uh, I don't know whether this is in the Grand Line, probably is, and maybe there's weather to protect it, but like, um, if he's also saying the truth is mm-hmm. it disappeared without a trace, I'm gonna say uh, mm-hmm. that it sank. I'm going to say I mean, that it sank into the, into the ocean and it's sunken treasure, whatever but, it was By the there. way, let me just clarify. I checked Manga Stream and Manga Stream's translation is, quote, and in reality, the entire island itself has vanished without a trace, unquote. In reality. Again, that could be metaphorical. It really sounds physical is what seems to be implied. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know how many of those characters had their devil fruits at this point, but uh, Whitebeard with his fucking Whitebeard could have sank that shit if he really wanted to. Yeah, he could have done it alone, you know, with his power. So possible. And it could be that know. like the, there was an ancient weapon there that was about to be fired. That's why they had to do it all there. I um, think that's pretty likely in the grand and, uh, scheme of things. And it's like, okay, we need to destroy this weapon. We need to sink mm-hmm. it. We need to just wipe it completely off the face of the map because it's like maybe it is the island the island is a weapon it's like a laser beam or something i totally agree i mean just for example like consider the fact that like i mean it sounds like this is probably pretty related to like end true end game maybe one piece itself the ancient weapons here's just a hypothesis that makes total sense here maybe maybe rocks was literally here was gonna shoot like pluton or like well we know uranus is fucking shirahoshi but like like, one of the endgame weapons, but, like, his plan was he was gonna do it and, like, kill millions or trillions or billions of people in the same thing, because he just didn't give a fuck. Roger and Garp teamed up to stop him, and maybe, like, what endgame One Piece will be is Luffy finds this location, and yeah. he uses the weapon too, marks but, the like, spot. after saving people, like, so that nobody dies, or very few people die, because we know that the Fishman Island prophecy has to happen. It's very likely all blue gets formed by destroying, you know, Reverse Mountain, maybe, and then Marie Joie, uh freeing Fishman Island from the bottom of the ocean and whatever. Like, all, all these things, there is a path that makes perfect sense of what's going to happen here, so who knows okay, if it'll happen. I, but. I, I need a refresher. Yeah. So there's okay. the road poneglyphs, and you have four of those. Mm-hmm. And the show Raftel. You, 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 yeah, the, the show R- Raftel. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Raftel is not like the last island of the Grand Line. It, it is. It is. At least that's what's said. 
Is it? Is that how? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I thought, I, so I thought, it's I never been the road confirmed. Glyphs was like, mm-hmm. you need all of them, mm-hmm. and then also to go to Raftel to like find out where One Piece is. I think what's basically said is that the. I'll have to double check, but I believe it said the road poneglyphs, when you have all four, they X marks the spot in some way, and I think it shows the path to Raftel in some way. It might be like, you know, geographically up further in like the new world or whatever. Um, I think I think that's the idea. Let me just fucking check here. Because I was wondering if, if they could li- if they could like crisscross to God's Valley. But, I mean, the, 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 they've been moved. They don't even show, like, if you just know... Like, in Final Fantasy 1, the, the locations of the four dungeons where you fight the four entities on the world map, they literally form a physical X on the planet and show where, like, the, the final boss is in, like, the center. Um, but the, the road poneglyphs are, like, they move. They just have information on them. I think you just... That, that X marks the spot, I think, is more metaphorical than, like, a physical thing. Um... I don't know. I, well, it's I could probably, be wrong about that. It's probably that. like latitude, longitude, like coordinates, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh, in I wouldn't one doubt place. it. So simplified, mm-hmm. maybe. I, probably something along those lines. But yeah, it said the poneglyphs are blah blah blah. The road poneglyphs literally mean road text of history. Detail a location. The combined locations detailed by all four road poneglyphs allow one to locate Raftel. So that's the that's okay. the gist, I guess. Well. Hmm. So yes, that, anyway. So that island the world government wanted to hide, it was wiped from history books. Mm-hmm. It was all, get out, get out of here. Um, and they furthermore, they wiped the, the history of Rox himself because he was researching poneglyphs and probably all kinds of ancient weapons and taboo subjects in general. So they didn't want anybody to know about that shit. Yes, and they, the, the, now we get his name, Rox D. Quebec, so he's Canadian. Zebec, I assume. So, okay, there's a couple things to note about this. I don't know if you're aware of this, Gib. I don't know if you were in the, in the discussions or anything. So there's a couple things of note. So as, as I said previously, we know that, um, or so Zebec is the name of a, it's a type of ship. Uh, it, it is, so it's the name of a ship. So, okay, cool. Um, also, apparently Rox is a, is, a, is a reference to a real-life pirate, something like, it's like Rocher... Brasiliano, who was like a real pirate from Brazil or something. Uh, so, okay, whatever, that's cool. But uh, it's a tangible, One Piece time. First of all, he looks real cool, wild man, like him, look, looking looking like a dope dude. I want to see him fight, hope for a flashback. Um, he's got D in his name, makes sense. He's trying to overthrow the world and become king of the world. D's over, they defeat gods, that's their thing. They're going to take down the celestial dragons one day, hopefully. Okay, but here's the, here's the real deal. Um, did you know, Gib, that the name of Blackbeard's flag sh- flagship is the Saber of Zebek? The Saber of Zebek. So that's just clear. That's the name of this character. It has been revealed. Um, hmm. th- this was shown in a um, one of those uh, the the what are they called the Vivri cards, the one like that have been like revealed with like official information or something. So, sh- so, so the fact that yeah, go on, go on. I guess then. That would mean, you know, whatever the rocks guy, Mister mm-hmm. Mister Rocks D Zebek, mm-hmm. was going for is what Blackbeard uh, wants to follow in his footsteps. So, then... as Sengoku says clearly, Zebek was it was researching all kind of hidden knowledge about the world, secret shit, doing big plans, and trying to recruit power. Interesting. So, Blackbeard is clearly doing very similar things. He's got information almost nobody else seems to have all over the world. He's like an extremely well-researched guy. Um, he knew about like the devil fruit absorption power stuff that he could get from Whitebeard in some way. He knew about, I mean, he knows about all kinds of stuff. He's clearly like a plotter and a schemer. So it's just, there are many parallels to Zebek, And we've got this connection of his ship is literally named the Saber of Zebek. Like at almost that seems like a clear reference to this guy. Yeah. Like he has inherited the will. So he's and in- let's not forget that the the pirates' beehive that Blackbeard is like in charge of the pirate paradise is the island where the rocks pirates were formed originally. And Blackbeard, that's like his home base. Yeah. There he's, are many he's a big connections. Fan. He's a fanboy. He's like a he's all up mm-hmm. on the hidden lore. He could do a lecture on on Zebek. He I could think. definitely do a lecture. Some say 
that there may be more tangible connections to him. I mean, just, just to throw it out, I don't believe this. Like, maybe Blackbeard is like Zebek's son. I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe uh, it could be true. I, I know, no reason to necessarily believe it. Possibly true, who knows? Um, I, I think it's more likely, like, is, is Luffy's Roger's son? No. But he has inherited his will. One Piece is all about inherited will. Yeah. I think it's not crazy to think that Blackbeard, who's like a dark reflection of um, of Luffy and his like love of freedom and stuff. Blackbeard also believes in freedom and pursuing your dreams. I think Luffy, as is parallel to Gold Roger, I'm starting to think that Blackbeard is as parallel to Rox D. Zebek. This is my theory. Yes. But, um, I mean, it makes yeah, the most sense. They're the, 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 the mm. most obvious, mm-hmm. like, final villain uh, mm-hmm. rival mm-hmm. pirate thing. Yeah, yeah. Except Maybe Buggy. Rox Ex- had the fucking black, the Yami Yami Nomi too. Oh, who knows, man? It could be anything. Blackbeard's I mean, like the same guy. Blackbeard, Maybe Roger the Gomu Gomu. I don't uh, know. Roger having the Gomu would be silly. But, That'd um, be cool. I mean, Shanks <laughs> did find it. Like, why did he have yeah, the Gomu yeah. Gomu? Why was he looking for it? Why has now, he used I, it? Now, I believe, we could, we could check on these things, but I believe it is said that, like, at the, in chapter one, I think they say, like, we got it on, like, a raid recently. We found, like, the devil. It doesn't seem to imply any larger significance. Yeah. Now, I'd call that, if that turns out to be the case, I'd call that maybe, like, a very soft kind of retcon, because it certainly doesn't seem to imply there's yeah. any importance I mean, on I mean, I don't but, think Gomu needs to have, like, a secret mm-hmm. special, like, maybe maybe we yeah. might learn someday of a person who used to have the Gomu, and it's just, like, an interesting historical figure, but that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Uh, but Blackbeard, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he was specifically looking for the y- Yomi Yomi. Yes, he was. Yes, so he was. If he's like a big like Zebek nerd, uh, he mm-hmm. may have researched it. You know, studied it in the library uh, library at Cantalot, like Man. looking through all the little <laughs> scrolls. Like, ah, I gotta find uh, out, and he founds it. He founds it, and then he can enact his plan. Um, Every night when he w- finishes his devil fruit research, he writes a letter to Princess Zebek and throws it into the <laughs> fire in the vain hope it'll reach his princess in the afterlife. Uh, I mean, they might not be dead. He says, like, uh, 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 they do this thing where fucking Segoku says the very vague thing of, like, Zebek is no longer with us. Zebek is, like, no longer, like, what the fuck does that mean? Is he dead? Just say he's dead or that he's alive. He's I don't no, even trust you. Yeah. He Zebek, could be back. So Who is knows? he dead? He is out to lunch like no just tell us tell us please. just say you fucking old man piece of shit maybe uh, the truth is knows? that they they didn't he check. is blackbeard oh my god as like frozen in ice <laughs> and he's back baby i don't know <laughs> yeah just like ice age four <laughs> wait but then whitebeard would have known that zebek was in his crew as his subordinate i'm starting to think my crazy wild theory <laughs> with no information behind it may not be true. I'm sorry to break it to everybody. <laughs> Man, I keep looking at Marine Ford New HQ and I can't take yeah. it seriously with the big McDonald's logo in the back. I'm loving it, dude. I don't know about <laughs> you. It looks like a place to get excellent snackage. I'll take three apple pies, please. Excellent. <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's see. Ooh, maybe, um, remember, remember that, that Marine cook who, um, uh, what's his face fought, uh, w- Wenzel, Wanzel, who was like the ramen cook. Oh that yeah. The, fight. The maybe he's serving up McDonald's CP fries at the drive through. Yeah. He was, this, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think that was CP seven. Damn it. That means he's not a Marine. He's a CP. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to pull up past, uh, you know, Marie Joie and be like, I'm going to roll up on my uh, ship that goes over land and say one order of a big Mac, please. Only ramen, and then it'll serve it to me, and it'll be great. <laughs> Big ramen. <laughs> okay. Anyway, right. uh, so there you go. So, so that so was we're Back to the Future. Yeah. yeah. The, so they, they, you know, Kaido and Big Mom, part of the same crew in the uh, in the mm-hmm. past, and uh, if they and come back, back together, together then yep. it may be the strongest pirates. Oh, we've we've got to really think about that. And now, now that we've got the interesting part out of the way, here's like a, the slightly less interesting, but still pretty interesting. Uh, People go nuts bounties. for this shit, man. But it, it like this. This is really cool. It is. We've cool. all been wondering for a million years, but we all know this is arbitrary and doesn't really matter. It's, well, uh, uh, in in this one instance, actually, I would say that it's less arbitrary. Um, okay, that, that just some be- of this just because matter. these are the mm-hmm. biggest bounties canonically. They do not go higher than this. 
And if they yep, ever get surpassed, true. that will be a big news. You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, so yeah, first of all, Blackbeard. We know his already. Two mm -hmm. billion to you know the actual bounty of the real Blackbeard in yen or something. And okay, you know, I just so I've seen that guy say like the oh, Library of Ohara or whatever. Like this is converted. Does I I have not, I've been look I have not found why that's the case. Like is he a, like two two billion yen? So that's like basically twenty million dollars or so in like American dollars. Is that how much Blackbeard's bounty? Can someone please provide a source well, as to what that is? Because I, I don't understand. Like, is he, is he accounting for inflation? I mean, I what's the... I don't know. I mean, like, back in the day, like, the where's pirate... Where's he getting that from? The pirate gold, like, the the actual real bounty of the real Blackbeard would have to be adjusted for inflation, for sure, so... All I'm um, saying is, I don't know been. where he's getting that from, and I very much want to know. Please so, so cite me something. Show me a source. Because, look, all I'm saying is, these people have said things that aren't exactly true uh, in the past, when they just kind of get carried away wanting to make connections. And I would just love it to find out exactly where he's getting this number from. Okay. So, just trying to be a critical viewer. Yeah. Uh, so, that's that's that. Yes. Uh, then, the next man... Uh, w w wait, they say something specific. He was first recognized as an emperor six years ago. So, time skip was two years. So mm -hmm. four years before Luffy set out on his journey, Shanks became uh, one of the four emperors. Yep. Wait, that's... Uh, the, the, okay, that was before, but that was well after Luffy met Shanks when oh, he was a young yeah, man. Yeah, yeah okay. So Sh that, Shanks, was, Shanks was just a pirate in the making of becoming cool. He'd been to the Grand yep. Line yep. maybe once before... Twice before. I mean, he fucking was with Gold Roger on their uh, on their adventures, so he's definitely been oh, there. Oh, he, he's definitely been all over it, but his mm -hmm. his specific crew and his own notoriety. But yeah. Uh, Gabe, I, I forget. Were Buggy and Shanks with Roger when he, like, went to Raftel and shit? I can't um, remember if they were physically I mean, there. I don't think uh, I ever s have seen a flashback with Shanks as a boy and Buggy as a boy mm -hmm. with Roger on the same, in the same place, but it was his ship, and... I would presume that they, you know, they were on his ship as cabin boys. God, Buggy is so fucking cool. Fuck Shanks. He's a Yonko, whatever. Buggy is so fucking cool, dude. He was with Gold Roger. Ah, oh, it's so sick. Okay, anyway, um, on to this little twink boy. Pirate apprentice cabin swab the poop deck. Yeah. Shanks up jump to Emperor. So he's got a big bounty. He's got a four billion something Four billion, bounty. forty-eight million, nine hundred thousand. So, by the way, every, now that these numbers are being revealed, okay. So, so the the top the topmost bounties. We're getting into like the top highest ones ever. Okay, so that's cool. Um, they say that like Shanks has like a really powerful, well balanced crew where everybody's really strong, as opposed to probably like Big Mom. Some are weaker, some are stronger. Um, so maybe overall this crew is higher than other people. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, like, I, 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 I would say that like yeah. the way Luffy has like built his crew is based off of mm -hmm. Shanks having his own. Like, all of his yeah. crew is, like, you know, very strong and can handle themselves. The weakest people are, like, Chopper and uh, Usopp, probably. And even those guys are, are pretty damn strong yeah. compared to uh, the other folks, especially after the time skip. Uh, but now that we're seeing the bounty numbers, like, the, the top big numbers, those matter. Those are interesting. But, like, the... Oh, shit. My bike! <laughs> I'm just... I'm gesticulating too much. The lower down numbers are, are fairly arbitrary, so a lot of people have been looking into, like, puns or references that might be in there, and I think some of them are definitely there, but, like, Shanks, I don't see any immediately. I'm curious uh, if anybody else sees anything in there. Do you know... I'll, I'll show you what you I know mean some Japanese, like, what do the numbers mean? What words could they mean? Four, I mean, yeah, eight, so, nine. So, the, so the 489, I mean, you call that, like... So numbers can be pronounced in many different ways in Japanese. So there's tons of different, like, puns you can make. You generally read this as, like, like she, ha, or hachi, and then, like, q or ku. So I'm not seeing any connection with the 489. Um, and the, the, the top four is probably, like, significant. I, pro that's just probably for, like, scaling power level stuff. Um, uh, you know, relatively speaking, because it's a bounty. It's not an actual power level. Uh, I don't see anything, so let me know, people, if you see some. But we will get to some that I 100% do recognize. Um, so let, let's get to the next one. So we've got Big Mom. Big Mom next. Yep, she wiped four, out Elba from the village. Uh, yep, yep. 388 
Oh uh, yeah, four billion three hundred eighty-eight million. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's that's Charlotte bigger Lindley. than Shanks. So this one, bit. this one, I think is a decent. Uh, I saw the Library of Ohara guy say about this one that maybe that eight eight at the end, um, like that would be pronounced uh, ha ha for Hachi, and ha ha is another way of saying mother or mom in Japanese. That strikes me as a, a potentially like an intentional pun that Oda's yeah. going for there. That, that, so that that, that, that one I think is pretty decent. It's Again, like, we don't know for sure. It also but, means it also means lol. It does mean epic la raflamau. And if you so, say eight eight, there's like oh she eats eats. Ooh, eight eight is also like a Nazi number, so ooh, race war ooh. confirmed with Big Mom. That's ooh, that's no Tugs good. collar. <laughs> okay, next up. Here we go. He was All now right. okay, here we go. Kaido. Now I like this. Well, Although he was an apprentice with the Rocks Pirates. From here on out, I will be referring to Kaido as his official name, Kaido Pirate Apprentice. Beast Boy. That's his official name, and he will always be known as a lowly apprentice. Uh, but he acquired some big boys, and he's got a big scary face now. Governor General of the Beast Pirates, Kaido of the Beasts, bounty forty four billion six hundred eleven million one hundred thousand. I've been trying to think of what four six one 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 could mean, I, and I, I I do have the answer. It's one it's one, one one one. He's pressing one. Yeah. This guy is clearly a rowdy, a big munchy head, big spirit science lecture lover. There's no doubt in my mind. He's a big fan. Definitely. Uh, he's pressing one all day. He should. He, he, Oda really should put ones all the way through to the end of his bounty. But um, I get the idea. I can appreciate that. You know, if you turn that six. One one upside down mm-hmm. it becomes nine eleven. Oh my god! <laughs> Confirmed. Kaido's Kaido's the kind of nibba who would do nine eleven just for fun. I think he'd do that shit. Yeah. He basically nine eleven himself onto Kid Apu and Hawkins' island back in the day. So that was pretty cool. He was yeah, ma- the maybe plane. maybe this is like Paradox Crux in the future. <laughs> Sweet he has Mouse the same, being he has the same someone physique. else. Sw- he Sweet does, Mouse you know, is one of his does. beasts. Mm-hmm. He, Sweet Mouse is like Jack, just trying to be a big boy, but nerding it up consistently. Uh, all right, moving on. So so the, the seven warlords are all done. They're wrapped up. Oh, see, now that they reference again, the, um, we'll have to see how the SSG from the Marine Special Science Force... Uh, I, I, wait, yeah, this special is special science force instead of the G. No, no, no this what am is I missing the here? SSG, as in like a thing or a or a squad from the Marine Special Science Force. So I assume mm-hmm. this could be like Mark Two or Three of like the Pacifistas, but like something, uh, uh, something mm-hmm. on that level, like a, a, a an engineered weapon, probably made by Vegapunk. Yeah, uh, probably. I mean, uh, we, I think it's almost guaranteed Vegapunk's involved. He's involved with all this shit these guys do. Um, it, uh, okay, now, now I looked at Manga Stream. Manga Stream translates this SSG as science or special science group. So that's probably what SSG stands for. I, I think that's confirmed. Not 100% sure. Yeah, oh, maybe. But, uh, I, I mean, we'll see. Shishu Bukai gone. SSG making some new shit. We're going to see what people replace him with. Um, and, uh, and now, just, just for the sake of satisfying our autism, ladies and gentlemen, yes. two bounties that you've been wondering about for a coon's age, Whitebeard and, Ch- and Robin, R- Roger, I mean. <laughs> okay, here we go. Goldie Captain. Robin. What now, she... now, now, here we go. <laughs> Captain of the White, these are the two highest of all time. It's outright stated. Captain of the Whitebeard Pirates, Edward fucking Newgate, bounty, five billion, 46 million, and that's it. Now, I can tell you right now, uh, uh, R- Whitebeard... His numbers are 4-6 because he's Whitebeard Shirohige. Four in Japanese is she. Uh, six in Japanese is Ro or Roku. Shiro Shirohige. That's 100% a pun in his bounty number. That one, 100% confirmed. Excellent work. Way to go, Oda. You nailed it. And now, gold fucking Roger himself, the Pirate King. Highest bounty of all time. 5,564,800,000. That's the highest bounty. And now, okay, one caveat. They say these are the highest pirate bounties. Is it possible that stated most wanted man, Dragon, has a higher bounty? Potentially hmm. possible. Potentially, that could be the case. It would be, um, it would be very strange if so, because the, the revolutionaries don't seem to be that effective. I, I know. It'd be weirdly, like, technical, like they're saying, like, but it's the way that Louis said, like, 
Whitebeard was the strongest man on the planet. Kaido's the strongest beast on the planet. Uh, Charlotte no Linlin single. is the strongest woman on the planet. See, it totally works, you guys. They they might pull something like that. It's yeah. possible. But uh, uh, so th- there's a couple of theories about this um, this this Roger bounty. That's so so Roger's bounty is just below five billion six hundred million. And as we all know, Luffy's numbers are uh, five and six for Go and Moo. Um, that's another way you can pronounce six. Oh my God, guys, is it possible that at the end of the series, Luffy will surpass Gold Roger and get the the beloved, the desired Go Moo five, six, like five billion, six hundred million bounty, proving he's like achieved beyond Gold Roger and is like, you know, also his numbers. So wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. I, maybe, you know, that that's possible. I find that mildly amusing, <laughs> potentially interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to say. Could be cool. Cool pun. Good job. Good job. We'll see. <laughs> but anyway, so there you go. No pun. It's they're, they're brand new says. Um, by the way, if you don't, guys don't remember, this is Commodore Brand New, who's in charge of all meetings in Mar- uh, Marine HQ. And also, he's the one who decides bounties for all the pirates. So he's a very important guy. He originally decided Luffy's bounty way back in the day. So isn't that neato? And he he just says, okay, so those are the highest bounties, but you Kaido know, and Big Mom are teaming up. So, oh my God, big bounty. <laughs> you, know, you know what's really funny then is yeah. is the idea that you, this guy came up with all the bounties. He's He knows mm-hmm. the numbers. And yeah. so he's... Him satisfying the autism... No, no. Him satisfying the autism <laughs> of everybody who loves bounties. Um, maybe he's one of them. Maybe he just... Thinks of I bet he is. Power, I bet he's a big bounty well. head, <laughs> and he's like he nerds out all guys, day. Guys, this is so big. You see, if you look at all these bounties, Big Mom and Kaido put together, they're better than Roger and Whitebeard. Like what? he does say that. He does say that shit. I mean, it's his job. This is his main thing. He does. I, you know, I, much. I that makes me as a reader. I way prefer the idea of like this guy is doing like an in-universe joke about their bounties. I like that so much more than, like, Oda making, like, editorial decisions about, like, puns. I I don't mind meta puns as well, but this tickles my fancy even more. So I choose to believe that that's the case. I mean, canonically, he literally is the character deciding the bounties. So you know what? I'm going with that. Until proven otherwise, I like that very much. (laughs) So there you go. And, oh my god, it's Sakazuki, it's Akainu, here he comes, baby. Uh Uh-oh. Big dick on campus. Yeah. Barging in. <laughs> so we're all, it's all like a silence in the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sengoku stands up. He's just like, ah, oh, I'm just telling everybody about this, this, the rocks pirates, you know, the mm-hmm. thing you don't mm-hmm. like people to know about. And, and he says, he's like, Sengoku, things are happening in Wano with those guys getting together. We do not have resources to do anything about Big Mom and Kaido forming an alliance. So they haven't done anything yet. So don't worry about it. Just put it out of your mind. Let's deal with this Shichibukai shit right now. And maybe we'll deal with this later when bad things happen. So that's cool. Yeah, but then Sengoku says something about, like, mm-hmm. uh, relating to Odin, you know. Isn't it a He's coincidence like, oh. that, like, all of, mm-hmm. this, all of this stuff is happening over in Wano? Hmm. Well, beyond that, he says, hey, uh, did you guys know that there was a pirate in Wano, or from Wano, that was in the White Beard Pirates fucking kozuki odin who then later on joined the roger pirates uh and was with him on his final voyage so isn't that fascinating odin was actually in the whitebeard pirates as Wait. a division commander was he yeah he was a commander where, where that's what he, that's what he, he says say that? oh it, it used to be a division yeah okay I, I and then he that. fucking joined he was poached by gold roger oh. for like the final voyage you isn't know that fascinating that almost guarantees that roger and whitebeard had a davy back fight for odin <laughs> I if wouldn't say it guarantees it, but that, I mean, maybe. That'd be I mean, how, cool. how else would you, you, like, you just ask nicely? Like, if I mean, Im- imagine, imagine like Gold this, Roger. This, this, this sort of code that you can't really, you know, if, you're, if you just leave a crew, then that's, that's disloyal. You well, know, don't, don't you, forget. Don't, uh, Odin was the future, like, uh, like, he was out being a pirate and stuff, but he was the future shogun of Wano. So he had that, like, he's kind of like Vivi, like, kind of like uh, temping as a pirate doing this part-time because one day he knows he has well, to go home i mean uh, h- how can you be like a temp and also a division commander 
Um, I mean, to be fair, that could have been like 10 years out. You could be a division commander for like 10 years and then be like, okay, guys, there's a cap on how long I can do this for. <laughs> I don't know, I, but I'm just saying it's, it's, oh, uh, Roger knew he had a disease that was killing him, which is why he did the final voyage. So just imagine you're a division commander on Whitebeard's crew. You've had run-ins with the Roger pirates many times before. You know Roger. You think he's a cool guy. And he comes to you. Everybody loved Kozuke Odin. Whenever Odin isn't around, everyone's asking, where's Odin? Um, and, and he comes to you. Ro Roger comes to you and says, buddy, I'm dying, but I want to turn my final years into the spark that ignites like the golden age. I have a vision. I want to I conquer the Grand Line at last. I'm putting together a golden boy crew, and I want you to be on it as my final like journey. I'm just saying, that's a, that's a tempting offer. That's a tempting offer. Because Whitebeard wasn't even interested in like finding the secrets of the world or conquering the Grand Line. He just wants a big gay family with big gay sex because uh, he's gay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Odin wanted a little bit more and Roger was able to offer that to him. I don't know. Maybe. It's possible. Uh, maybe. I think the, the, the language of poaching seems like it could. It does, yeah. It could imply that, that it was a Davy backfight. But I hope Davy backfights become a bigger thing because they are definitely. cool as shit. But your idea is interesting as well, like him just mm -hmm. choosing. He has a big emotional, like, he does that thing where he looks down over his mustache and he smiles devilishly over it and says, I'm going to set the world on fire with my stuff. I'm going to be the Pirate King, blah, blah, blah. Because the Pirate King wasn't even a thing up to that point. So that could be a very uh, very so, big dick. So I, I haven't really been looking at what people have been saying. I don't really mm -hmm. know what Sengoku might be implying with this. Is there anything, like, the idea that stuff is, like, mm -hmm. the Rocks Pirates potentially coming back together, um, yeah. and Odin being all that, and, like, uh, you know, isn't that interesting, well, Sakaguki, Gooch? Sakaguchi. This does seem, this does seem, I mean, I, it's a little bit out of nowhere, but, but not really, because, like, okay, so two of the big Rocks Pirates, they, they became fucking Yonkos. There was one other, but he's fucking dead, so obviously he's not on the table to be part of this. Whitebeard, obviously. So, like, the fact that these two are getting back together, Whitebeard and, uh, oh, sorry, uh, K uh, Kaido and Big Mom, and it happens to be in the place of Kozuki Odin, and maybe these guys even know that the Odin clan is the one that created the Poneglyphs all, all those years and years ago. They probably do, um, yeah. They, they prob these guys, like the, the two fleet admirals, they probably do know um, about this shit. And, like, the fact that, I don't know, I, I think there was, there was, like, been discussion up to this point about, like, the Rocks Pirates being mentioned. I can't remember the exact conversation that mm. Garp had all, right, all I those, think, like, dozen chapters ago. I think then if, mm -hmm. if this is all, like, you know, the Poneglyphs contained the ancient history knowledge... Um, the mm -hmm. Rocks Pirates were terrorists trying to destroy the world. Or take and they were over trying the to find out the secrets of the world. And they were trying to find uh, out the secrets well. of the thing. Like, yeah, um, yeah. from our perspective, we know that they just... Big Mom didn't plan to go to Wano. She was just chasing Luffy. Um, right. And they so don't know that, it's... Though. Yeah, so, like, from their perspective, it's like... Uh, on Wano, the Rocks Pirates are coming back together. They're trying mm. to, you know revitalize the dream to destroy the world government they they're in wano whereas all the, the knowledge is or mm -hmm, like it where it, mm -hmm. where people know shit potentially yeah, that's right so it's uh it's related in that aspect like we gotta Dude. protect ourselves <laughs> it's almost funny like sengoku here is like oh do you remember that pirate that literally is tied into the secrets of the whole fucking planet like, the whole void century, like, he knows everything. He's the inheritor of the clan. Uh, and also, like, a pirate that Whitebeard, Roger, and Shanks, like, all fucking loved. He had, like, two of the legendary swords. He's the only man to ever give Kaido a fucking scar, ever, with his so cool legendary swords. Kozuki fuck Like, jeez, we are piling so much shit. Onto Honestly, we're getting into law territory here. And we no. need to, I, I think we need to slow it down a little bit. I thought Odin was really cool. I'm just saying, let's not give him too much, guys. I, no, cause... no. You're, you're, you're being silly. The, the fact that he so? was already on Roger's crew is like, he's a, he's a cool I guy. I mean, okay. Th like, that is this, true. This, that this is doesn't true. tip it any more over the edge to hear that Shanks likes him. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I would, like, I, I would, 
I just want to hear them refer to him as like, ooh, there was a pirate who was on these crews and like knew things. They, they seem to be framing it as like, dude, remember that like literally coolest pirate ever? Remember how like everyone loved him? And like, he was literally, I wish he was my dad because my dad sucked and this guy was like totally sick. <laughs> I, all I'm saying is just go a little bit easy on that language and, uh, and I'll be perfectly satisfied. But you, you're right. This doesn't change the calculus at all. Nothing substantive has changed here. Everything up to this point is totally natural. I mean, it's... I want this flashback. You, you could Real read it like it. like they're just gushing about him, but like... I mean, Sen we did Sengoku learn that he was on... bringing this up to Sakazazugaguki because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because of some implied, like, um, you know, animosity between them relating mm -hmm. to it. Like, I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. Sengoku doesn't like the doesn't like the, the the cut of this guy's jib and he's like rubbing sure. rubbing it in by just saying this out loud in front of a whole thing of marines as he Th leaves that, that's casually. true but we shouldn't forget why exactly was it necessary look I, I, I'm, I'm i'm trusting ode on this this isn't a big deal i'm just giving people my thoughts on it like was it necessary to also make odin a division commander on whitebeard's crew now i'm giving him space he can tell me how but like unless there's some significance to that it's just like, okay, we're just making him cooler for kind of no reason. But uh, like I said, I'll give him space to, to convince me why that was necessary and like cool for the plot. Because, you know, before this chapter, we just thought that he was a Roger pirate that everybody loved. Now he's also a Whitebeard pirate that everybody loved. Okay, we're just, you know, we're tying him to a lot of cool things. I need to see him I mean, do the, some the, cool things. The fact that like um, this guy mm -hmm. was like, he wanted to be a pirate and... and Whitebeard, Kaido, and Big Mom are all connected under the rocks. Yeah. Sort of makes it so that... I don't know, like, uh, I can't think of the words to what describe... What if he was also, like, Big Mom's, like, second husband? And he was also Kaido's best friend, or, you know... Uh, I, it, I, don't think, I don't think it feels like that yet. Um, yeah, yeah. In, with this just one thing. I know, I know. It's not that bad. I'm not, I'm not that upset about it or anything. But I am very eager to get to the punchline of Odin and see what the fuck that boy is about. You're, I'm, I'm officially hyped up. I yep. have been for a long time. Let's get to it, Oda. Let's, let's see this boy in work, in practice. So, I want yeah. to see him party down. I assume uh, we're going to come back to Act 3 of Wano after this? I, I, think, I think that like before we go back to Act 3, I think the only... The two things we need is we need answers on what happened to Sabo, which I suspect we will get in this little thing. And I think we need to know, like from last chapter, like what's the deal? Like what's the event that happened? Was Cobra murdered? Was like, did Sabo I, do something? I don't, is... think, I don't think we're going to get an answer to that yet. I think that'll be like the next intermission. Because like it was only maybe, introduced maybe. last chapter. To, to, to spill the beans already will. would be I like... I think we will. Really? Hmm. Uh, I do. I, I do happen to think... Excuse me. I, I think that many mysteries will be left. I, th I think that, like, what we'll get is, like, it said, like, uh, we'll, we'll get, like, because, like, like, the whole world is reading the newspapers about what happened during... Like, everyone knows. We just don't know because Oda's deliberately not showing us, like, what's in the newspaper. So that's a very easy piece of information to show us, I think. And then I suspect we'll get, like, the shot of, like, Kind of like Law recently, of like Sabo, like in a cell, beat up. But like, oh, I gotta escape. I gotta do things. I think that's gonna be the last mm. thing. And oh I, my god, I, I, I don't just, know. Oda, I feel, I please feel like... don't do a, a Sabo rescue arc. Don't do it, bro. We have so many rescue arcs. Ace didn't go well. <laughs> you know, Sanji was good, but we've had so many of those. I uh, yeah, I don't think. I think we've had enough of that. I mean, I don't know about that, but like, I I feel like. Mm -hmm. this chapter ending on like a big Wano thing in Odin, it could even be leading into Act 3 being the backstory, like the flashback of Odin, and that's oh, Act absolutely. 3. And then absolutely. Act 4 is like back in in re reality time. I, I think that, uh, as Oda always does, I think he's going to wait till like the climax of the battle to do a flashback when that's when we learn about Odin, which I suspect will be in Act 4. But I have no fucking idea if that's actually the case, so whatever. We'll, we'll see. Maybe one of the acts will, in fact, be the flashback. That'd be probably a pretty good way to handle it if you wanted to do it that way. So, um... Yeah, because, like, at the end of the Odin uh, flashback, you would know a lot more mm -hmm. about Odin, a lot more about yep. um, Gold Roger and, and Whitebeard mm -hmm. and all this stuff that was happening. And then yep. we come back to the intermission where we see 
Blackbeard and and all this stuff, like all of these mm-hmm. marines scrambling to like destroy the Shubu uh, Kui and all that. Yes, indeed, indeed. Maybe we'll even get to see what uh, Rokugo Green Bull looks like. I'm 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 ready. I'm ready to see that shit. But uh, who knows? That's just that that doesn't really matter that much. That's just a detail that'll be fun. So that's it. I mean, so this is a huge chapter. Crazy things happened. I'm just gonna just take a moment to mock. Uh, again, the same theory crafter people. Some people were saying this is literally the best chapter of One Piece ever. I I think that if you think that, I mean, I'll I'll be charitable and say you have very different priorities than me. Um, you know what's like the best chapter of One Piece? Like like the the chapter where the bell was rung. Or the chapter where, like, well, Alabasta finished. Or, like, things where an actual arc concluded in a brilliant, satisfying way. Those are, like, the best chapters of One Piece. Um, I mean, it depends on what, you know, floats your boat. Obviously, yeah, people that's like those things. But, like, maybe this gets them more hype to, 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 to get a more, a, you know, a bunch of info that they can theorycraft around. It just strikes me, dude. Okay, obviously, all the stuff about Roger and Rox, very, very fascinating, very cool. Uh, but it's all set up. And, all, like, pages and pages and pages of numbers, yes, they're interesting, yes, they're cool, they don't really matter to the story. To get that excited, for a bunch of fucking bounty numbers, I- I'm gonna say it, I think you have your priorities literally wrong, if you find that, that fascinating. You're, you're reading One Piece wrong, if, like, Luffy's fucking Reiatsu readings, oh my god, it's over 9,000 on the power level scale, I, I just think that's silly to think is that cool, the rock stuff, that's good. God Island, that's cool. I just, I'm in a fucking war with these people who overhype things. It that is, aren't, it is a bit overhyped, you know? but like, I, th- I see the reasoning behind it, and it's really just that in mm. a shonen, yeah, like you were saying with Swords a few chapters ago, yes, uh, at a certain power level, you can't really tell the difference between mm. characters mm. except for some, you know, some, they, they just some state, meter, wow, some he's system. even stronger. Yeah, we uh, the, the best way to do it actually is to have power levels with like known power levels to fight, and we see who wins. Yeah. that's that's always reliable. I mean, the thing mm-hmm. with bounties is like it's not just the power level of the guys; what they decide to right, do right. and their notoriety uh, generally, um, mm-hmm. which is Absolutely more true. a much more interesting power level system. Which is why bounties are much mm-hmm. more interesting mm-hmm. than power levels were ever were in Dragon Ball Z. Indeed, very true. Um, very true. And uh, you know, even the fact that like Big Bird can. Can spin. Mm-hmm. He can uh, like sway public opinion on Luffy and stuff. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so you know, I, I I get it. I definitely get hype for when the bounty bounty, the, you know, an arc is mm-hmm. finished and the bounties go up because it's like yeah, um, a vague like sense of how the world sees them as like a like a popularity, mm-hmm. th- like a like a dangerous threat. Like how cool are these pirates? It's how Indeed. much the government wants to shut them down because that's the whole thing. How much are you fighting the power? That's how big your bounty is. That's how cool you are as a pirate. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, I like that. These were just pretty interesting. Um, but, like, yeah, the, the bounties are not the interesting part. The interesting part is, like, the history of the Rocks Pirates, the, the, the reveal of Garp's uh, heroic exploits. Yeah. That's good shit, man. That's good shit. I just, I just want to know what they're going to do. Like, what are they doing right now? What are they doing, and what is Black Bear doing? What are they all doing? It's a, it's a great question. But I, I just, just guys, let me, let me just lecture you <laughs> about the correct way to appreciate One Piece. This chapter was a, was a bunch of fucking exposition about characters that we have some information on. And yes, we are literally at the highest stakes of all of One Piece now. It's cool. We can appreciate it. We all want to see the super powerful guys do stuff. But we're just told... Garp fought with Roger. Rocks fought with Garp. Blah, blah, blah. Someone won. The Rocks Pirates disbanded. Oh my god, all the Yonko were involved. This is, this is such hype man... It's a hype man trap chapter. It's going to appeal to the people who, like, have it in their best interest to hype up the series and make it... I'm not saying that anybody's, like, being deceptive or anything. I'm just saying, like, for a man who wants One Piece to be hype, this is the perfect chapter for him. But he's wrong, and here's why he's wrong. Because this chapter is all well and good, all those things are good, but just compare it. Just compare it to my personal favorite moment in all of One Piece, and the end of every chapter is similar to this. But when Luffy rang the bell, when Luffy rang the bell, in that one moment, it was a, it was a confluence 
of all the plot threads that had been weaved throughout the chapter, uh, throughout throughout the fucking arc, okay? Starting with the knock-up stream. We meet uh, uh, Montblanc Cricket. He has dreams. His ancestor was, was, was besmirched. There were literal storybooks written about how this character, who we actually get to know, we actually understand his personality and his motivations, and he has a fucking arc. So he helps Luffy ride the knock-up stream in the hopes of clearing his family name. It's a personal one-on-one -on -one war this guy has. And we, we vibe with him. We, we believe in him. We get to, the, we get to Skypiea. We learn about the ancient uh, Shandoran people, how they were blasted to the sky and they fought a fucking war against the Skypeans for like hundreds and hundreds of years. There's a, uh, both sides want to claim the city of gold and the verth that isn't available. There's a personal struggle that we understand through the people like, uh, uh, what's her face? Um, um, fucking, Conus. what's her name? The, what's the name of the girl? Conus. Conus. Like, she's the vehicle through which we understand the Shandian people. And then also there's the fucking Shandorans we see through Isa, through Wiper, and their deep struggle to defend their native land that was just blasted into the sky to, to fulfill their promise to the ancient Shandoran people who had some connection to the fucking uh, creators of the uh, Poneglyphs hundreds of years ago that we learned about after the arc ends. And all of it, and, and the one man, the one man who stands in the way of destroying everyone's dreams is Anaru, and Luffy needs to use his powers to defeat Anaru. And in that one moment, that flashback, we learn about Montblanc Norland. We learn about the true story behind it. We learn about Kalgara and his struggle to fulfill his promise to his people. And we have their descendants of Wiper, uh, Kalgara's descendant, and we have fucking Montblanc Cricket, Norland's descendant. These two people across time and space, these two have a shared dream to reunite these people. And Luffy, with that one final blow, of the fucking golden rifle smashing Enaru out of his fucking way and ringing the fucking bell. We learn about what those giant shadows down on Earth were. It was the Shandians. They were alive the whole time. They were, they were trying to keep the promise. They were trying to reunite these two people. The ringing of this bell symbolizes so much to so many people. It proved that Montblanc Norland was not a liar. Montblanc Cricklet, he, his, his, valid, his struggle is proved valid. He sees the shadow of Luffy against the clouds. So much is understood at one moment and so many promises are fulfilled all at once. That is the chapter of One Piece. That is how you write an end of an arc and that is what an adventure is really about. Setting up all these mysteries, setting up all these character arcs and answering them in one final climactic moment. That is the best chapter of One Piece. That is the best moment of One Piece. This was pretty good. I mean, That's that wasn't was one chapter. That. that was a whole arc. Well, well it's, it's, the, it's the culmination it's the chapter that fulfills... Like. Yeah, it's, it's like a game of... Um, they say they call soccer the beautiful game because soccer is a game where there's a team, they're all, they're, their movements appear chaotic, but then something happens through all the hundreds of hours of practice, through all the games they play, suddenly everything, all the machinery just lines up perfectly and the ball goes to one guy, kicks to another, and just out of the chaos emerges that one perfect shot where they get the ball right in the net. And that's what like the end of an arc should be. This arc, this chapter, this chapter we're looking at right now is just pure hype. It, yes, it's, we learn a couple all, things. It yeah. sets up for the future. It's hype bait, people, and don't fall for it. it we want I, we, it's it's the culmination of an arc where all the work pays off. That's what you should celebrate as I a true achievement um, of storytelling. I definitely not do not like hype generally. I I, th I feel like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I guess I agree, but um. Uh -huh. Oh, you know what it I'm is I'm not trying like? to lecture to you, obviously, or anybody else. This is yeah, just yeah. well. I, I am trying to lecture to them, but not you, because you I trust. Uh, it, what it's like is like um, people screaming with uh, mm -hmm. with joy, uh, seeing the Millennium Falcon in a trailer, or like or like Star the, the Bayonetta thing. three like, logo, and it's like oh, it's a it's, logo. Or it's like game. yeah, yeah. It's, it's it, but specifically for a trailer. So like, right. There's yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. yet. It's set up. It's hype. It's cool. But like, yeah. you're just screaming at hype. You're not screaming at it being good yet. And, and isn't it just, when you compare the two versus the pure hype you're talking about, yes, it's a promise of cool things to come, hopefully, versus a completed perfect arc that you can look on and say, wow, now that, like, we can, re we can respect, like, the intellectual effort that went into it, all the different factors that, like, weighed into it, and you can, re like, like, me looking at Katakuri's finished arc, 
th that's like, it's totally, there's many imperfections. There's many things to criticize, but what good that there actually is, is, is beautiful. It's, it's beautiful what they were trying to convey. And I feel it was a success despite imperfections. Skypea is not perfect. I'm totally aware of that. There's a lot of characters that aren't that interesting, but what good is there is so much more valuable than the hype of things to come. And I'll, I'll lecture motherfuckers all day about the correct way to appreciate a story like this. Not this fucking hype that maybe, oh, we're gonna see a flashback with Garp and Roger, oh, so cool, versus an actual story we have in our hands we can value, appreciate, and judge, and, uh, and you know, explain why it's, why it's so fucking good. That's, I mean, to me, it could not be more clear. That's the sort of thing that really matters, not, uh, not just hype for hype's sake. But that being said, a lot of cool stuff in this chapter. Obviously, it was a great chapter. Just when I hear people say, Chap best chapter ever, I'm like, I, I am reading One Piece with different criteria than these people. And it makes me want to say, go read Bleach, bro. That's the series for you. You know, power levels, just go get into that shit. It You're not appreciating hit. One it Piece died, correctly. Though. It was <laughs> killed. It was, it was, it was soul reaped. Reread Bleach, only read it like upside down. Or, or read Bleach backwards, which is about a sad guy losing friends uh, and losing powers and uh, watching his mom come back to life. So it's a happy ending at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has a flash <sighs> forward at some point of his mother getting uh, uh, mother coming out of a monster. Oh, a nice monster uh, pulling his claws out of her, bringing her back to life. And hooray, how nice. How nice that is. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. All right. Okay. Anyway, yeah. that's it, everybody. Enough of that business. I think you get our point. That was a great chapter. Not, Of course it was. A lot of good stuff in there. Endgame shit. Here we go, lads, and uh, take it easy, everybody. We will see you next week with another one, hopefully. Uh, Patreon.com slash ThePodcastPirates. Support the show. Hope you enjoy our discussions. We would love it if you could join in. And you can click the description down below to join the Discord or pledge $1 at least to get in as a crew member, and we would very much appreciate it. So do us a favor, lads. We'd be, we'd be way into it. Oh, you know, Gabe, th there was one final thing I wanted to say. I'm, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. I made a Twitter thread about this subject, which was just, speaking of hype and people getting things wrong, a lot of people had reported a while back, now that we, now that we know Shanks' bounty and all the Yonko's bounty, it had been reported previously that Shanks had the highest bounty. Me and some of the super sleuths in the Discord, after we saw this chapter, we were wondering, like, why did people get this wrong? Like, what, what happened here? I went and I actually did some fucking research. Now, I didn't do this beforehand, so it's only after learning that I'm doing it back, so I'm not, I'm not that good a super sleuth or anything. But upon learning that it was incorrect, I went back and looked at the article in VJump and see why people got it wrong. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put the link to my Twitter thread down below. But like there was a, there was an article that report, it showed the screenshot and reported that um, uh, it's confirmed. Shanks has the fucking highest bounty in the se uh, of all the Yonko. And so that, that's what, what was reported. But when you actually look at what the thing says at what the actual Japanese words say, it is, it is very explicit that what it actually says is that the um, Shanks, it describes that he doesn't have a devil fruit that appears to be a definitive statement that seems correct. But it also says, like literally, it says that the uh, Shanks, is, it, Shanks feels like the character who would have the highest bounty. It lit I'm just, to go nerdy in the Japanese here, it literally says, um, it says about his bounty, it says Ichiban Takai Kigasuru. So Ichiban means number one, Takai means high, and Kigasuru means has the feeling of. Like, the verb in the sentence is literally has the feeling of being the highest. So this was just simply, like, this is the hype, this is the, the, the bad things that the hype machine does. People want to believe that this means that Shanks is the highest bounty so they can report on it and be like, oh my god, hype, 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 so cool. It's, it's false reporting. This is an editorial sentence saying it feels like Shanks has the highest bounty. At no point did it definitively say he does, in fact, have the highest bounty. Probably shouldn't have included it at all because people could misread it this way. But it's def it clearly states that it just has the feeling it's not actually that way. So, so just don't be like that, people. I mean, be critical. Based, based Check on this, this image that it's like Shanks was at the Gorosei uh, yeah. place, it's like, man... You know, this pirate's so interesting and mysterious. Feels like he might be one of the coolest guys in the whole thing. And that's, that's just that's the exactly way, what it says. Like it's just sort of like a, like a, a little hype thing. The, the not, reason not why not meant I think to be people... anything declarative. 
Uh, you know, that, that's definitely true. The, the kind of, the, the issue that I sort of get with people is that in the same block of text, I think, I didn't translate all of it, but I believe it's in this exact same block, it does say, Shanks does not have a devil fruit. So in this paragraph, there's one definitive statement by like the editors, then there's another, like, it's clearly, it's not definitive statement. It's quite explicit. It says it has the feeling of. So, like, I I, I want to give people well, a little bit of lenience. There, in one sentence, it's definitive. In the other, it's yeah, yeah. It's clearly not. But, it like, read the fucking sentence. The sentence says it ha- it feels like it's that way. It does not say it is at all. So. I think, I mean, I think the fact that they said the declarative, like, he doesn't have a devil fruit was meant to emphasize the yeah, yeah. the importance of wow this guy doesn't have a devil fruit and he's here wow how mm-hmm. cool could he possibly be he seems like he could be the coolest guy like it, i just feel like people I have mean, a journalistic I can't read responsibility all, but like uh, yeah. right right i mean i never it's believe just... like hype things like that like confirm this confirm that anyone can say it's confirmed and put it on a blog i I, don't... I wish I had checked this before because I, I mean I can read and speak some Japanese. I would have been able to tell that this is just like it says it feels like, and I would have been able to to say this before. I, I wish I had done so. I, I don't I don't think I had seen this article previously. It's just uh, like we we really are functioning like journalists. I think people have a responsibility to perform to report information correctly because I I kind of actually care about people having accurate information so that they can form like real impressions and make like real theories about One Piece. I don't, I just, I mean, as we've been saying in this episode, I just think it's irresponsible and a bad thing to like, just let people run away with their hype. Cause you know what that does? It sets up for disappointment. I don't want people to be disappointed. I want them to be, you know, appropriately hyped. One Piece is my favorite thing ever. I'm pretty hyped about it. I just don't like information that's wrong. It makes me, mm. makes me annoyed. So well, you should do what better. I do and just <laughs> yeah. never uh, like t- like look at anything except for the actual chapter the, the source it's uh, that that is what i do do that basically is i hadn't seen this article but once this chapter came out people were pointing this as like lol people got it wrong and they did because other people reported about this article and no one said that like it's wrong at least nobody that i could I mean, find and when, those when same hype people they reported like oh yeah it's true it's, they didn't check the source you gotta check the source people come on yeah le- i mean Nobody fucking, like, journalism itself is, like, pretty shit yeah. overall right now. Mm-hmm. That, that's my big yeah. hot take. Like, nobody Ooh, checks shit. things. They just All see... Right, Donald they see, Trump. <laughs> they see that there's, like, um, you know, somebody reports on something, and then, yeah. oh, we should say that there it's was a report enough. on like, something. It's good enough. Like, we don't need to check. They said it. It must be true. That's yeah. that's the attitude. Lazy. But nah, bruh. Uh, okay. Well, you get it, people. Understood. Just, just you know, use... use this is why... Like, when people say crazy theories... It, just don't believe them. Just don't believe them until you got proof, guys. It, it, it'll, it'll keep you from believing dumb things that are almost, uh, that don't pass the smell test. When I first heard this, it's like, well, this obvious, like, what kind of editor, editor would say, like, imagine them actually saying, like, they don't give any numbers. They say, oh, we talked to Oda. He told us Shanks has the highest bounty of the Yonko. Like, what a, what a weird bit of information to reveal. It doesn't pass the smell test. If he wants to say, like, hey, guys, we're revealing Shanks' bounty today. It's this. Now, that I'd be like, well, shit, that sounds pretty serious. But this kind of weird, like, soft information being revealed on the side here, I, I think, uh, frankly, I think it's weird to reveal here that, uh, that Shanks doesn't have a devil fruit either. Let us speculate. I don't, frankly, trust that he doesn't have a devil fruit. This might be proved wrong eventually, but... I don't know. This that seems more reliable. Okay. Point is, you get it, people. Be good. Check your sources. Learn Japanese. Uh, that's helpful. <laughs> it worked for me, and it's it's good to know if you care about this stuff, which I expect to my entire life. So there you go. Okay, Patreon people, give us money for hard hitting journalism like this in the future. <laughs> patreoncom slash Pirates. Yes. A thousand more years. A thousand year Reich of the podcast. Here we go, people. Have good. a good night. We'll yeah. see you next week. Bye. Bye.